habe ich zwei, drei Announcements. Das erste ist, ähm, das ist der Probevortrag quasi für mein Bachelor-Kolloquium, das ich morgen halten werde, ähm, which is why this talk will be in English. Because this talk tomorrow will be in English. Um, second, as this is kind of um, the test talk for tomorrow, I encourage uh, each and every one of you to give me uh, lots and lots of feedback uh, regarding the slides, regarding uh, what I'm saying uh, and stuff. Please just come to me after the talk and um, Yes, we can, we can talk about the talk. Uh, okay, so let's get started. Um, I'm talking about my bachelor thesis, which was um, Dynamic Modeling and Model Validation of an Action Painting Robot. Um, you probably have no idea what any of these words mean, but we'll get there. Um, I will first uh, give a short overview on what I've done in my bachelor thesis and how it relates to other stuff. Um, then we'll talk about uh, basics in physics, numerics, and software. Um, I will talk about how uh, everything was implemented and um, Last but not least, talk about model validation and um, what is going to happen um, with the robot. Um, so first, what is the basic idea of what I am doing? Um, the basic idea is we want to have a look at uh, how motion uh, and the dynamics of motion uh, in art is perceived by humans. Um, for this, we basically take a human um, which does some sort of action painting. Action painting means no more than you take a brush, you put it in paint and you smash it over some paper and then you have a painting. Um, it's not quite that simple, um, and the paintings are not quite that small, they are gigantic, um, but that's the idea. Um, we take a human that does these, uh, uh, that does these paintings, um, we motion capture how he's painting a painting. Um, from this motion capture data, uh, we can uh, calculate um, some objective functions uh, by which he was moving. For example, he was trying to maximize the jerk. Uh, which is uh, the first derivative of acceleration, or don't know, he was uh, trying, uh, let's say, to minimize energy or something else. We can calculate these um, objective functions. We can implement a robot platform um, that generates motions with these objective functions. Um, and if we have these motion, motions, we can get the robot platform, platform to paint action paintings, um, which we then, uh, because we have full control over uh, the objective functions that we get from here, um, give people um, to see how they react to these paintings um, and to see if what we thought was uh, were uh, the motion primitives for our uh, paintings, which are the obje objective functions that, that, that come out here, if they have any impact on how the motions, uh, how the paintings are perceived. This is the idea and um, what I was doing is um, basically um, this part of motion generation and the interaction with the robot platform. This is um, what I'm doing. Um, these are, this is one example of a painting that uh, should in the end be produced by the robot. Um, and um, this is the old uh, robot that produced this uh, painting. Um, and as you can see, it's um, not that pretty from a, don't know, style perspective. Um, and it has this, this egg hanging down here where paint drills from. Um, and so uh, this, was, uh, this robot was implemented as a uh, sort of proof of concept in 2008 by uh, Michael Raschke and it worked quite nice but um, it broke down um, some time ago and then in 2014 uh, Fabian Day, um created this robot on the left side um, and yeah this is the actual robot I am working with and my uh, task was now um, to create a dynamic model um, of the robot, which will in the end look something like this, or it will be visualized as something like um, this here on the right. Um, okay, so I've mentioned that I'm going to implement a dynamic model, um, so maybe let's talk about what is dynamics actually. Um, when we are talking about modeling, or about modeling um, rigid bodies, uh, we have to distinguish between kinematics and uh, dynamics. Uh, kinematics mean we are uh, looking at um, how the bodies uh, move uh, according uh, with respect to each other, what the angles are, um, what their uh, velocities are, but we do not consider any physical properties of the object. We do only consider, uh, yeah, sort of, let's say angles and stuff, and um, these things. Um, in a dynamic model, uh, we want to implement um, such things as masses, centers of masses, and moments of inertia, and um, everything to have a real a physical uh, idea of how our model, how our bodies behave um, when forces are acting on them. Um, and for, for the creation of a dynamic model, 
uh, we need a few uh, physical basics. The first one is um, the center of mass. The center of mass uh, is a quite intuitive concept um, as it describes the one point uh, where, uh, if you want, all masses sort of attached to. So if you have a body distributed in space, let's say um, you have four bodies. Do we have any chalk? Yes. Let's say you have four bodies placed somewhere here, and you want to calculate the center of mass for this. Um, it would be located here because this is the point that's equally uh, far away from every uh, every body, and if the bodies are uh, of the same weight, then this is our center of mass. Um, if we don't know make one body heavier, the center of mass will probably shift into that direction. If we make it even uh, heavier and heavier and heavier, it will shift even more. So our center of mass gives us um, the point at which the uh, uh, forces acting on the body um, attach to the soil. Um, it gives us, it gives us an, an, an idea of uh, how our body will react uh, to a force when applied, uh, at least a translational force. Um, we also have to consider rotational forces, um, which is where the moment of inertia um, comes into play. The moment of inertia um, gives us an idea of uh, how our body will react um, to a rotation around a given axis R. Um, this means uh, it basically can be expressed by one uh, single number, and the bigger the number, um, the harder it is to get the body um, to rotate and the harder it is to get the body to stop again once it is rotating. Um, yes, these are uh, two, two properties that are qu quite important uh, for our dynamic model. Um, and with these we can implement the, dy uh, the dynamic equation of motion for a multi-body system, um, which looks somewhat like this. Um, Q, in this case, are so-called generalized coordinates. And we are trying to reduce our uh, physical model to the very basics, to uh, to the least amount of, uh, of, of uh, parameters that we have to give to describe the model completely. Um, yes, um, this this much uh, for for the physical basics. Um, what we want to do when we once we have um, once we have our model, uh, we want to solve a so-called optimal uh, control problem. Um, the reason for this is that uh, we want to simulate human motion. And human motion, in some way, is uh, considered to be optimal. And um, we want to have a robot that we want to control in some way. And we combine these things, and we get an, uh, an optimal control problem, which looks something like this. Um, let's see what is really important for us. Um, our optimal control problem basically is defined by an ordinary differential equation, which is stated here. x dot is equal to f of x and u. Um, x are the states of our robot, which were previously called Q, here they call X. Um, U are the controls that we have to control our robot. I will uh, talk in a few minutes about uh, what these controls on this robot actually are. Um, the basic idea is that we have uh, two functions. One function, uh, phi L, is uh, called the Lagrange uh, type objective function, and one function, phi M, is called the Meyer type objective function. Um, the Meyer type objective function is basically some idea, uh, it is basically the idea that at the end uh, some property should be fulfilled. Um, the Lagrange type objective function means that over the course of our actions some property should be fulfilled. Um, for example, we, we could say uh, that yeah, we want to minimize energy or we want to uh, maximize, with the, which is kind of the same as minimization just with a minus sign before. Uh, no, we want to uh, maximize the uh, amount of space traveled or something else. Um, this, are the, this is what we want to minimize, such that our states x um, are equal to the ODE defining our process, um, and we can give this process some boundaries, um, which are given in a uh, function g for equality constraints and in the function h for inequality constraints. Um, to solve this uh, optimal control problem, um, we need uh, we, we will use uh, the direct muscle shooting method. 
Um, the basic idea of this method is um, that we start discretizing our model until we can uh, use a nonlinear program, uh, until we have a nonlinear program, and then solve this one um, using SQP. Uh, the first thing we do is we discretize our control. What we do is um, we have uh, some uh, set time frame from T0 to uh, some end time TF, in this case T7, and uh, we uh, we discretize this in, uh, in this case into seven intervals, and on every interval we have we have uh, only one uh, control function. And um, to make our lives easier, we assume that uh, these control uh, control functions are uh, just constant. So um, this is how we discretize our controls. Um, then we discretize our states we we had before. Um, in general, with uh, with our ODE, we want to solve a boundary value problem. Um, which means we have some sort of dynamics going on in the middle. We have a starting point and we have um, some sort of an ending point, and we're going to get from here uh, to here following the dynamics in the middle. And this can be quite complicated um, because we do not quite have that much of an idea of what our dynamics in the middle look like. And so, what we do, or what uh, the idea of single shooting does, is um, it starts here and uh, it sort of interpret the canon, which means that we start here, and we say, okay, uh, we want to start here, we want to go uh, down, and we just let the dynamics do their thing, and have a look at where we end up. And we, we would follow our dynamics, um, we would integrate all this, this whole time frame, and we would end up somewhere, and now we know, okay, we are not quite, we are a bit far off, so we might start at a uh, slightly, uh, slightly different an angle, and we might get here, or we might, and then we see, okay, we start a, a sort of somewhat even different angle, and we start here, and then we get to the desired endpoint. Now the problem is, um, this works for uh, small time frames um, or for uh, simple dynamics. Um, in the case that we have quite complicated dynamics, as is the case with a um, multi-body system, uh, this method, the single shooting method, is not quite viable because um, we could uh, change the, ang uh, the angle ever so slightly here and end up in uh, the first uh, iteration here and then the second iteration somewhere, no one knows where. Um, so what we do is we discretize our uh, our time frame and um, we say, okay, we, we solve uh, this, uh, we solve a, a boundary value problem from here to here and from here to here and from here to here. And over these time frames, we can uh, control. Uh, we, we have a much better control over what is actually happening. Um, and the only thing we have to uh, we have to pay attention to is uh, that uh, the point that, that the end point here is uh, the starting point uh, of this interval. Um, and all this discretization um, of the states and uh, this discretization of the states. Then we discretize uh, our objective function. Um, which means we uh, we have one objective function for every uh, interval that we are discretizing on, um, and we also discretize our constraints by only enforcing them uh, then on uh, on these nodes and not on uh, the whole time range. If we get into trouble because our constraints are violated somewhere in between, um, we just add more nodes. Um, this uh, leads us uh, to a so-called nonlinear program, uh, which looks somewhat like, uh, somewhat like this. We have uh, one uh, variable x, which contain, cons uh, contains all of our discretized states, um, all of the discretized controls, and basically everything else we discretize. Um, and we have one function f, which includes our initial boundary value problems and all these um, uh, constraints acting here, yeah, is these uh, in Germany they're called Anschlussbedingungen. I have to look up that word. Um, yes, and as we have uh, discretized our uh, constraints, we also, yeah, we, we can we can write them as a function uh, as a big G and as a big H. Um, and this is uh, the problem that we are going to solve. And uh, what we do for this is the so-called. Uh, Sequential, the so-called sequential quadratic programming, and um, what this looks like um, is basically we want to minimize this function f, which means we take the derivative, derivative and set this equal to zero. Uh, set this equal to zero. Um, we have to pay attention um, to the simple fact that we want um, our function g, which should be a big g, um, to be zero, and we also want the derivative of this function um, to be zero. These are our first order optimality conditions um, from the simple idea that we want to minimize stuff. Um, and uh, we basically apply the Newton method to this, 
um, we take one Newton step um, on these first order minimum conditions uh, R, um, which looks like this. Um, and the derivative, the Jacobian of uh, this, of these uh, conditions down uh, up here, uh, look like this. Um, and the square here, you know, basically why this is called sequential quadratic programming, and we iterate this procedure over and over. Um, these are the numerical basics um, that are needed uh, for the, for solving the optimal control problem. And so let's have a look at the software that was used in um, this thesis. Um, the first software is uh, called Meshup. It was written by Martin Fides. Um, and it is used to, uh, A, uh, most importantly, visualize uh, the finished model and um, the calculations from the optimal control problem. Um, it uh, defines the model uh, in a simple Lua script, um, and it, it also includes the dynamic properties um, of our uh, robot. This, this model is then read by the so-called rigid bidynamic library. Uh, as you uh, might, might already have noticed, this, uh, complete, this idea of, we, of setting up equations of motion for a multi-body system uh, gets rather complicated once we have more than two bodies. Um, therefore, we do not take an analytical but uh, a numerical approach, and we calculate and we use the rigid body dynamics library to calculate the dynamics of our rigid body system. And the rigid body dynamics library was also implemented by Martin Fides, um, based on the works of Roy Featherstone. Um, it calculates the equations of motions in forward dynamics using the educated body algorithm and in reverse dynamics using the uh, recursive Newton Euler algorithm. And for solving the optimal control problem, we use um, Moose code, which stands for multiple shooting code for direct optimal control, uh, implemented in, uh, by Hans Georg Brock and Karl Plitt in 1980 something, um, which yeah, solves the optimal control problems for ODE and DME systems um, using the presented. Now that we have our basics, um, let's look at what we are actually modeling here. Um, this is uh, the robot, and the robot is trying to, uh, the robot resembles a human arm, um, which means it's a, it has a shoulder up here with uh, two rotatory uh, degrees of freedom, one moving like this, and one moving up here, round and round and round. Um, it has one rotatory degree of freedom in the elbow, which just acts like a normal elbow, and it has two rotatory degrees in the end effector down here, one is zero rotational, and one changes the angle here. Um, the, uh, the joints of the angle here, here, and here are uh, 3D printed and in between are carbon tubes which make, which make the robot rather light um, and rather easy to, to, to actuate. Every um, of these five degrees of freedom is actuated by a small servo motor. Um, this is the model that, uh, that we get. Um, this is the visualization of the model implemented in Meshup. Um, the center of masses and the, inertia, and the moments of inertia um, for the 3D printed parts um, are calculated via the printer files um, for basically everything else, which are uh, ones, uh, the, the servos and um, the carbon tubes. We assume them to be either uh, cubes or cylinders, which is a um, valid approach if you just look at them. I mean, yeah, this is a cylinder, and the servos are just cubes. Um, and we can put them in, into our model. Um, the masses uh, have been weighed by uh, Fabian Finkel in his special thesis. We can just include them. Um, this is uh, how the model looks like uh, when displaced from its uh, resting position here. Um, and we can uh, and we see that our model is fully functional. We have our one degree of freedom here. We have our two degrees of freedom up here and down here. Um, the optimal control problem uh, is implemented by, yeah, as I said, uh, we use minimal coordinates. In our uh, case, uh, Q1 uh, to Q4, which just correspond um, to the angles in the five uh, degrees of freedom that we have, in the five yeah, joints that we have. Um, and we can implement a forward dynamics problem, um, which basically looks like this. We have our, uh, our differential equation, our, our states, um, look like Q, Q dot, and tau. Tau are the forces acting uh, on our system. Um, their derivative is obviously uh, Q dot, Q double dot, and tau dot. And the accelerations are calculated by forward dynamics, 
which uses um, information about the state and the velocities and the external uh, forces to calculate the accelerations. Um, the derivative of the forces is our u. This is what we uh, control in this case. Uh, the control um, in the optimal control problem should not be confused um, with the control of the actual robot. This is not quite the same. Um, in the inverse dynamics problem, uh, we simply uh, we, we uh, describe our state as q, q dot, and q double dot, um, which when uh, derived obviously look like q, q double dot, and q triple dot, which is jerk, um, and we control via jerk. Um, the jerk control uh, idea was uh, first found in 1875 by Tamar Flash and is now um, considered a viable approach in modeling uh, human arm motion. So it is generally assumed uh, that humans try to control their arm via jerk. Um, the different object objective functions that we are using um, are first we are trying to uh, minimize jerk in some sort, or we might try uh, to minimize our tor our torques squared, which are uh, related, uh, which are found to be related uh, to to energy consumption. So by this we can um, minimize the energy spent in the action. We might minimize our acceleration squared or um, the complete time that we use. Um, of course, this, these are only some basics for uh, more complex objective obje objective functions, uh, as we can put all of these. Um, together and use them at the same time and uh, maybe even weigh them differently. Um, these are uh, the results um, of our of our calculation of our calculations of of Muska. Um, we see the controls in uh, blue. As you can see, they are all linear um, throughout the whole the whole motion. Um, yeah, and uh, the the first five uh, red plots uh, correspond to uh, the positions the next five to uh, the velocities and um, the third five to the accelerations in our problem. Um, in this case, uh, th this is, these are plots from an inverse dynamics problem, which means that the acceler accelerations as the integral over our control basically are linear, these are quadratic and the states are a cubic. Um, and as you might not really see what um, this means, I will uh, have a quick demonstration of what this looks like. Um, yes. So this is um, our role model that I showed before, and uh, we can uh, have a look at uh, how this looks like. And this is uh, a 12 second long motion uh, using maximum jerk. And yes, you can sort of imagine a paint spraying out of the white cube at the end. Um, I can play it again. And this is one example uh, for a calculated uh, maximum jerk model, uh, maximum jerk motion. Calculated uh, motions are then uh, played on the robot. The robot itself um, in the servo motors is simply position control, and we can give um, the results from the optimal control problem via a small script um, to the robot. Now that we have modeled our robot and have uh, calculated some, uh, generated some motions for the robot, um, the question is how accurate is our model? Um, how accurately is our model uh, following? Um, what we give to it, uh, how close are uh, the visualization of the model and the actual motion on the robot. And uh, to test this, um, when having a first rough uh, idea of a model of, of, of the robot and when having the Muska problem running, um, I started uh, implementing those generated motions on the robot um, and uh, those tests were rather promising. Um, they looked kind of exactly um, as they should, and they took exactly as long as they should. Um, so I postponed um, other tests for when the model uh, was completely finished and when the Muska problem was able to uh, generate a bit more complex motions. 
Um, unfortunately, my, uh, the, the shoulder joint uh, of the robot simply broke um, when I was trying uh, to play more jerky motions to it. Um, the motions played to the robot at that point were kind of exactly the motions the robot should or is designed uh, to accomplish um, and were motions that are quite realistic um, when doing action painting such as the one I guess was the one that I showed you um, in the visualization before um, and after two or three seconds of motion uh, it just broke down um, the, uh, I don't know why, I have, to, I have some ideas why it broke down um, the first is that um, the 3D printed uh, material um, might have been rather old and the robot was built in 2014, now we have 2016 nobody was using it in uh, this one and a half to two years um, so the model, uh, the, the material might just have been old um, also uh, the lab was moved from the Schweierstrasse to here which may or may not have damaged the robot in either way, um, we found that uh, the complete weight of the robot was held by only four strands of material, which are um, about the size of a half a euro cent. Um, so it's not that much of material. Um, this means that uh, A, we can, uh, I have not done any further validation of the model, um, since the robot is uh, not in a state um, to be used at the moment. Um, and this means B, that the first thing that has to be done uh, is to reprint um, the joint, as it is 3D printed, we can uh, hopefully simply reprint it, and it uh, might be milled from aluminium, um, which then will hopefully be strong enough to hold the complete weight of the robot in any case. Um, the second thing that should be done um, when the robot is uh, functional again is the implementation of uh, some sort of paint distribution a system so that uh, colors can be switched um, by the push of a button and uh, colors may even be mixed. Um, yes. This is um, what I have done in my thesis. 